You are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode. This podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who have been telling Oklahoma's story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at oklahomahof.com, and then definitely follow them on Instagram for all the information that you need, because I'm sure that's where you follow us as well, at oklahomahof. Let's get into today's episode back with another episode if you're watching on youtube or facebook you'll notice this is a different background because we are using my guest's podcast studio it's fantastic i wish all my guests had a podcast studio um mr stephen cook is uh i guess i'm in your house not you're in the house i'm in your house yeah um i was recently on your podcast had a blast um love the the studio that you have and was like wow we need to we need to do a story you know good oklahoma story it is isn't it yep so, Oklahoma since I was about seven, eight years old. Yeah. So you, you know, family's like a generational company that you have, which we'll definitely dive into. But for everyone listening, it's just like, who is this man? It's a, a feed store, outdoor and feed store, right? Yep. Okay. So commercial, commercial horse stuff is what we predominantly focus on. Um, we deal with uh, companies such as like Lazy E. Mm-hmm. Um, we have like other Express Clydesdales, real big um, horse farms is kind of our specialty, and yeah. that's kind of what I focus on. But we also have a obviously a retail um, store where we can have uh, pet food and just regular horse feed, and um, we even do like some of the zoo feeds and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So outdoors stuff, like you've been growing, you've grown up in outdoors. You grew up basically in the outdoors. Yep. Right. Yep. So um, we do we do focus a little bit on that, like some hunting stuff and things like that. Um, and then I, you know, obviously enjoy hunting and, and being outdoors and stuff. So, um, you know, the outdoors, honestly, we threw in the outdoor when we were trying to think of a name. So when we bought the store, it was called Crossbrand. Okay. Um, so it was a feed company that my grandpa helped start years and years ago. And we renamed it to Cook Feed and Outdoor. And the outdoor was kind of a... Uh, um, kind of like a safety net in yeah. case we wanted to sell some patio furniture or hunting stuff or we're like, and hey, let's just throw a generic word in there to try to definitely try to it's do like a- consulting, right? Yeah. <laughs> what do you consult? Anything. <laughs> Will you pay Anything me? You yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want. Yeah. Yeah. So that was just kind of our safe, safe okay. word. <laughs> so your granddad helped start the business. Yeah. So, a long time uh, ago. yeah, it's kind of a weird deal. He was a, uh, Perina, he was a consultant for Perina. Um, Perina paid him to mm-hmm. come in if they had a plant that was, um, like really losing money or something like that. He would come in and, um, try to fix that plant up. Well, one of his friends said, Hey man, I want to start a feed company myself. So how do I start a feed mill? And so he went from the ground up, helped him start that. So it was 30 or 40 years ago. And then about 10 years ago, that guy who was his friend had a Parkinson's real bad mm-hmm. and said, uh, can you help watch over my store in Oklahoma city? And he said, sure. And then about maybe four or five months later, he said, do you know anybody that wants to buy it? And that was my parents were kind of, um, had just sold all their Quiznos at the time. And they were like, we'll buy it. Yeah. So from, and like you said, your parents owned a bunch of Quiznos. So quite an entrepreneurial family from a young age. Yeah. My dad worked, uh, my dad, my grandpa on the other side had his own business as well. Um, and then, uh, he had a thoroughbred racehorse breeding farm. Um, that was my dad's dad. And then my dad actually worked at the company for a long time. Um, he was a vice president of a company called Leslie's pool supplies. Okay. And, uh, he decided that he wanted to own his own business Yeah. And he jumped off with the franchise of Quiznos to begin with. And we had a bunch in Oklahoma city. I say we, I was like a junior high. Yeah. I watched okay. dishes. So I guess free food. It. It's no big deal. <laughs> yeah. What do you eat for dinner? Quiznos again, dude. So <laughs> I was little, um, little story. I was like the, the drug dealer of the elementary school lunchroom because I would come with leftover sandwiches. Oh yeah. And everybody else had to just eat like the sandwiches or whatever that the lunchroom was making that day. And so I could always like trade for whatever I wanted because I'd have like a nice sub like Quizno sandwich, you know, that. and people would people would like give me their pie or whatever that their mom gave them. And I oh, pretty much got pie every day. How good is that? Yeah. Hundreds of pounds later, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. Um so, yeah, I guess, you know, growing up and it's, 
you based in Tuttle, right? Is that where you grew up? Kind of Tuttle area? Yep. Yep. My parents met in Tuttle, lived in Tuttle. Um, I went to school starting in uh, fourth grade there. Okay. So went there my whole, through junior high and high school and graduated from there. Yeah. And uh, we, we met because of a mutual friend, Jake, and I hope he's listening if he is and watching. Better be. Hey, Jake. Um, about to have a baby. Shout out. And soon, right? Real gonna soon. Going to name him Lincoln, which is my son's name. No way. Yeah. Oh, well, that's yeah. nice. Because yeah. you guys met right in, I guess, high. he's from Tuttle too. Yeah, he's right? from Tuttle. Yeah, we were in the same grade, played sports together, and went to high school, junior mm-hmm. high, everything together. Yeah. So when you, I guess, graduate high school, did you just continue to work or did you think, I'm going to go to university? Man, I I really, I was like one of those, which I think everybody kind of deals with this, that I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I I did know that I, I really wanted to own my own business. And my dad kind of like brainwashed me and was like, you you have no idea what it's like to work for somebody else type of deal, but just trust me, owning your own business is better. And so I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, uh, I started out with a uh, restaurant and hotel management degree. My parents had restaurants. I was just kind of (laughs) like, this will cover my bases. Yeah, It makes total sense. And, uh, I, I kind of like started, I wasn't real sure I wanted to do the Quiznos thing, but I wanted to do something in food. And, uh, then they bought this and it started doing really well. So my sophomore year of college, I switched majors to animal science, okay. and that's when I ended up. I ended up finishing at OSU, and uh, got an animal science business degree. So I yeah. kind of switched and was like, I could see me doing that or a different field in that. So because mm-hmm. can you go down and be a veterinarian or vet after all that stuff? Yeah, you can. You can continue on. That's where a lot of vets start is animal yeah. science, and then they go on. I stopped well short of a vet degree. But. Yeah, I'm not sticking my hand at the backside of a cow for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the one thing I think of would be an animal. No matter how much they pay you? No, thank you. That's just no. That's, that's not my scene. Um, but so OSU is, I'm sure, a blast, right? This yeah. is the home of agriculture, right, in, yeah. in the state. Like it is it's the go-to crazy. place. Yeah, they – I didn't realize – you know, you just go there and it's one of those deals you don't know anything different. But like the animal science school is like one of the biggest schools in that yeah. college and – and then, like, I found out that's very rare to even have an animal science school, much less, you know, have that big one. But mm-hmm. we also – so I was on the horse judging team too. So that paid for nice. a lot of my college. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty wild that that was a uh, – that was a another avenue where I was able to meet a lot of people in, in the animal industry. Yeah. But, and so while that's all going on, you're, you know, you're thinking – how many how – many feed stores did they have at the time at the time just one just one okay yeah. so my junior year of college in between my junior and senior year the somebody that had the yukon store wanted to sell it mm-hmm. and they approached my family about wanting to sell it and said uh you know we'll sell for this much and we just passed and she actually i don't know she closed her doors went bankrupt or whatever the business closed and we went in a couple months later my dad said if you can help me set up this other store then we can maybe set it up and then, you, you know, are you planning on working for me? I was like, yeah. So we went and set it up and, uh, between my junior and senior year of college and opened a, which was our second location. And, uh, so that's when we got the second location and now we're building the third location in Norman. Yeah. So, and the good thing is like, you've seen it grow. You've been there for the entire growth of it being in everything basically yeah like it's not like you've graduated and oh you have a store to come to it's already ready yeah. to go like you've got to go and establish this on your own and there's no better person to learn from than someone who's been doing it especially if they're old man yeah right yeah so was your granddad still around doing this stuff like he's so he was involved like the first year yeah so like when they bought it because they didn't know much about you know sure. a lot of the things and uh so he was around the first year and then he kind of uh i guess you say stepped away or whatever um about a year i think it was about a year mm-hmm. um after they had bought the business and uh so he was actually like involved involved too he owned part of the business and yeah. stuff they bought him out and kind of went that direction after about a year so he was very involved at first though yeah so right now you have three locations well we got two so and then two the third the one's norman. under okay the, the third one's under construction built. right now yeah. okay yeah so it's getting and built norman was just a good location that kind of way you wanted to go yeah you can get like actual horse numbers and stuff by county and things like that so nice. um we have like we worked with our, our vendors obviously want us to expand sure. and stuff so they helped us do like surveys and studies and stuff like that and showed us some of the numbers in norman that county down there the norman more norman area is very um interesting large in horse numbers so that was part of it um also the largest tractor supply we found out is in Moore, and the largest atwoods is in norman 
So those are the two Perfect. largest chains. So we were like, there has to be a lot of business. Yeah, down there's there. got to be a reason. <laughs> Maybe right? we can get a little yeah. bit of that. So so that just the thinking. location just popped up, or did you have to like oh, really man, try we and made find? like three or four offers on different. Yeah, um, trying to lease a building. We tried to buy a bare piece of ground. There was different reasons why they didn't go through, but mm-hmm. finally one came up. It was on the market for like a year, but it was a bare piece of ground. So we were trying to find a building already built, but yeah. it's kind of a unique, tough. unique situation we're in because we need like a warehouse type building, but with a retail Front area house, to it. Yeah. yeah. So it we've finally decided we need to just yeah. build it. Well, like the one we're in now is off I-35. Outside of all the construction that we have, it's a perfect location <laughs> to yeah. get to, isn't it? Like it's it's easy to get to from any part of town. Yeah, and that's how the Norman one will be too. It's right on the side of the interstate. Yeah. So, so daily operations are out of this one for you, right? Yep. And then do you just kind of pop around to the other store and just kind of, you know, your job obviously is just generate more business and, yeah. and see Make clients, money. you know? Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, I know you've got to take care of stuff here, but obviously it's a future, you know, if people aren't buying stuff from you in the future, yeah. then you know, if you're a business owner, you've got to bring new clients in all the time. Yeah. So, you know, what What was a typical day like when you first started compared to what it is now? Man, it's crazy. We, I I looked up the numbers not too long ago. I think we did like, uh, like 1.2 million in sales or something, which they, my parents had kind of changed the business and grown it quite a bit. Sure. Uh, my senior year of high school and then my freshman, sophomore year of college. Um, and then... So since then, now we're do we're like a six million plus business. Uh-huh. So we've grown, you know, six fold since. So what's crazy is, is a lot of our growth can come with machines and equipment. Sure. So instead of, you know, two guys unloading this, now we have a machine that'll do all of it and, yeah. and things like and that. And those guys so, can go work on something else so you yeah. can grow and beat, yeah. Yeah. So we do a lot of that growing with machines. But then the other thing we've done is we've tried to get managers at both stores in preparation for having a third because we know I'm not sure. going to be able to be, you know, involved super heavy. Yeah. So I've been working on a lot of outside sales and marketing and stuff like that. Yeah. Recently. And having a lot of fun doing it by having your own <laughs> podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I love, man, I... I had heard people say like they podcast as like a hobby and I'm like, how can you podcast as a hobby? Well, then I'm like, okay, if I, you know, dedicate myself to meeting other business owners and, you know, things like yeah. that, maybe it would be kind of fun, you know? And so finally I was like, all right, whatever. And now man, you've been doing it. Yeah. Like, I mean, I just like, thing I was like, no way would it be, yeah. you know, just a hobby, but it's truly, I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, I, I tell people like everyone should have one and they're like, yeah, whatever. And then also at the time I'm like, I probably shouldn't keep telling people that because then they will start <laughs> yeah, one. It's and like It's competition, right? <laughs> but it's so much fun doing it. You know, like we've like the, the guest you just had on recently that we spoke about, um, which hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll have them on as well. Amazing story. But like. When are you ever going to meet people like that? You know? know, and the people that you, I've met and, and that we've had, like we wouldn't have never met. You know, stuff like like it's it's a lot of fun. And, it's crazy. You know, it's if you can find a subject that you love talking about, just hang out. Like I, I just started a golf segment to mine just so I can hang out with four of my three of my golf mates <laughs> once a week to force us to hang out together because we just you know we got you know. Are you going to podcast kids. while you golf? Oh, that would be a riot, wouldn't it? Just put a microphone in the golf cart or yeah, something? Yeah, that, that'd be a long podcast. That would be a Joe Rogan-style <laughs> long run. Five hours. Yeah. That'd be like golf shot shank, and there'd be <laughs> some bad words after it. And like, <laughs> there'd be a lot, a lot of editing to make it decent, but... Uh, <laughs> It's weird being on the other side, isn't it? It is. I can't get over this. I'm like, <laughs> what's he going to It's own. almost more intimidating because I'm like, what is he going to ask next? Yeah, it's so weird. I, <laughs> it's weird. I thought it'd be more relaxing as the guest because you don't have to think of questions and all that, but it's almost like, do you like, think what's more? he about to ask? It's so easy on this side. I <laughs> love crazy. being on this side. I know. Yeah. I didn't realize it. I'm glad I'm a guest because I, I thought the you guest appreciate was it more the easy now? part. Yeah. Being on the other side. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. When, I, when, I, when you interviewed me and I'm like... Okay, what what have I just said? What have I got to say? And yeah. then I say things, or I've said, I listen to it back, and I'm like, that sounds terrible. Like, what have I just said? You know, <laughs> yeah. just little things. But yeah. um, there's a lot. You know, it, it's practice. The only just relaxing like part is like, I don't like if all your equipment jacks up. Like, <laughs> it's my fault, not, not yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm always stressing out about the equipment. Yeah, like, I've had a couple of those oh, just like recording. failed and stuff. I'm just like, did you oh, see me really? tag? Uh, What's his name in a... Desmond. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It's funny because his wife gets my weekly email. She's on the oh, email yeah. list and she replied to the email. She's like, I love the weekly email list, you know, and she obviously didn't see the that you tagged her in, in you know, Desmond in the thing, but they knew because I, you know, I told them <laughs> about it and they were laughing. But yeah, she, uh, I think it was her birthday recently. So happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, 
it's fun. I think everyone everyone should ha- at least do it once. It's crazy. Um, just to compete. It just takes a lot of time to keep it going, right? Because yeah. I've had friends who are like, oh, I should start my own. I'm like, well, yeah, you should. But like, just know, like, it's, 15 it's, hours it's, it's least, consistent. Yeah. You've got to be consistent with it. Yeah. Because it's easier now to start a podcast than it ever has been. And I had a friend who started, he's like, I'm starting a podcast, posted one episode. And I asked him, like, it. hey, how's your episode? How's your podcast doing? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's really hard. It's like, <laughs> what's hard? Like, just time. I'm like, well, <clears> like, that makes sense. But it's um, crazy. Has it been like good for you to, you know, to get clients in? And have you, have you, seen a positive track record from having new people in to so i started we kind of talked about our our uh, mutual mentor gary v mm-hmm. so like i think it was two years ago i had watched some of his stuff that uh, talked about you know creating like a video series or something like that sure. so i created a one called steve's horse show okay. and um that's basically the only marketing we did for the last two years and it was i it was a 10 to 15 minute, you know, episode type of yeah. deal that I would go interview other horse trainers or horse. I was like an educational sure. horse deal. And so that's been basically our only marketing for a while. So I've kind of already had people, you know, comment about, um, I saw your video on this. I saw your video on this and the podcast. I'm trying to just kind of have like a general, not zero it in on horses yeah. per se. Um, just kind of general business and other Come people from chat. yeah other yeah. people from Oklahoma because I don't want to just corner myself into I don't know I just I have no yeah. motive I guess like well as long as you I guess and it's kind of the same with the, with this is Oklahoma as long as you have some form of relatability back to what the general like goal is like yeah, Oklahoma is such a theme. yeah general theme like such a big thing in there yeah. you know it could be anything and same with you with feeds and like you could talk about feeding Pets. their dog and yeah. cats and yeah. parrots and whatever it is like. It, you, you know, it's great, isn't it? Outdoors is a huge topic to talk about. Yeah. You know, you have someone on who just, they sell tractor supply stuff. Right. Everyone, you, it's, you, there's so much stuff when you dive into it. Yeah. Isn't it? And I, I actually tried to get, and I don't know if he's going to be on or not, but I tried to get a guy that has a small chain of pet stores. Like he sells uh-huh. other feed and stuff, but I'm like, just stuff like that, like... We could be competitors, I guess, but at the same time, maybe he wants to sell all those locations in five years. Yeah, or exactly. You know, it's just yeah, like, yeah. just I'm just like kind of general thinking, I guess. Yeah. And then, you know, it's more casual to sit down with somebody for an hour to talk about what they'd love to do rather than sit down with them and be like, hey, here's my business. I want you to pay me for my <laughs> yeah. services. Yeah. Like, and it's... It's yeah. super, you know, it's less formal and Changes more, more it. relaxing. You know? And it's a, it's a mix between that too and, uh, you know... I don't, I would feel like almost uncomfortable asking someone to just go to lunch and just like learn more about you because I hate again, you know, they're lunch. like, what yeah. do you, what do you sell? You know, it's I like, hate no, it. like yeah. literally I just want to, if there's something I can learn from you. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, you yeah. know, or something, but yeah. will you be on my podcast is actually kind of flattering for some people. Yeah. And you know, mm-hmm. so it gives you a reason to, yeah, I hate when, when people are like, Hey, let's get, and, and if it's somebody that I don't know, then I usually, you know, my, I don't know who they are. I don't know what their angle is. But if it's someone I know and they never reach out to me and then they reach out, hey, let's grab coffee. I'm like, mm, you probably just started insurance. <laughs> you know? like you just started selling I'm just life, like, look, you? just give me a call. And like, I'd rather, like, you know, I mean, I drive around quite a bit. Just call me. And, yeah. like, we can talk about things and I can tell you yes or no rather than, like, and the I think this is just coming from getting older. The older I get, the more I value someone's time and my own time. Yeah. Uh, and I also realize that when you asked me to be on the podcast, being on the other side of it and being like, now I have to give up my own time for someone else. I realized how, how, how awesome that was. Right. Yeah. But also at the same time, like if someone asked me and I'm like, oh, I just don't want to do it. Then I realized like how lucky I am to have the amount of podcasts I've done and the amount of guests that are yeah. willing to come on, you know, cause it's, it takes a lot of time, you know, it's yeah. so for everyone listening, that's been on the podcast, I really appreciate you and you can definitely come on again. <laughs> uh, but I guess yeah. Just how long have you been? How long have you been graduated? How long have you been out of school? So I graduated in 2014. Okay, that's when I started. So you've been in six years then. That's when in I the started, business. yeah, full Almost full six. time. Of course, yeah. I worked, you know, right. part time and blah blah blah. Um, but it was all a the legit job like when that. you graduated. But it was, yeah, yep. Got hired by Pops. We had a written contract and yeah, the whole bit. Yeah, he, W two the full thing. He takes it. F- no, I mean it was like a written. This is what I'm offering you. I mean the whole deal. So now I'm a part owner, but originally, I mean, I was just manager of the store and yeah i mean it was a very you know normal type situation he's like super so it got real and, as soon as you graduated yeah then. i mean it was like this is what i expect and that's all that. nice though because you know that like you know you're like i'm gonna really invest my throw myself at this because like i said i am now a part owner and yeah you, 
kind of taking over some of the reins and going to run with it. And then, you know, Lincoln one day will, will hopefully be a part of it. And if, if he wants to be, if he doesn't, he then be. never mind. He better, he better yeah. be. He's working in the warehouse at least. <laughs> <laughs> How old is he now? Like two or three? Uh, no, he's, he's like five months old. Oh, that's yeah, hilarious. Four months. That's, I don't yeah. remember. He's just, you know, just got his t-shirt. So I made it. So I just started like vlogging, trying to like vlog once. Video a week. stuff's hard, yeah, isn't it? It's tough. Mm-hmm. The video is easy. The, the editing's hard. <laughs> yeah, very. Uh, so I started vlogging, and the first vlog I did was it was just like, "Who am I?" Like about yeah, me, yeah, yeah. and I had this like short clip in there where I was like talking about my family. Well, like, dude, if my wife listens to this, I'm trash. <laughs> but <laughs> but she, we can edit this out she, if we need to. She so there's a picture in my office. It was like my wife and my daughter. Well, I made a video. It was like, yeah, this mo- I'm married. I have a daughter, blah, blah, blah. She's like, you forgot Lincoln. Well, like, I remembered him, but I'm like, ah, that's nothing important. I mean, she like oh, she lit she's you like, up. She's like, you forgot about him. I'm like, I didn't forget about him because he's only a few months old. Yeah, like, he's new. You forget about him. Like, yeah. She's like, you forgot about him. She like <laughs> wouldn't believe me. She's like... So like two hours later, I'm like sitting there video editing. And that's yeah. what she, that's how she saw it. Cause I was video editing. She comes back like two hours later. She's like, I can't believe you forgot about him. I was like, I didn't forget. You like him. grab your microphone. You're like, and my son Lincoln. Uh, add so to the I, video. Like, I like put a video, I put words over the top. I was like, and I have a son. Like, that's I'm like, get over it. So how old's your daughter? Uh, she's four, just turned four. So she's definitely working in the store then. Yeah. <laughs> she's running she's around her, carrying yeah. food. So she loves like cash register stuff. So yeah. when she comes up here, I like make her say hi to customers and act like she's Instant in the register. Sale. So, oh yeah. Straight away, cute. isn't it? Yeah. It's like babies and puppies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, it works. Definitely. It works. So I guess what is, you know, because you've been doing this for a long time now since, you know, it's always been in the family. What is... What do you enjoy from it? Like, what do you love to do every day? Because there's parts of the business you you have to do it. You know, you don't particularly want to do it, but it it's essential. Yeah. To be successful, what's the stuff that like I just free? I I love doing this. Man, marketing and sales is where I tick. I really, it's kind of weird because most marketing and salespeople don't like any book book work type stuff, but I really mm-hmm. don't mind you know working on P and Ls and and doing that. Like I do all the book work and stuff for the both stores. So it's kind of weird because I don't mind that stuff at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love marketing and sales. Um, I, I get like, it's almost like a nervous feeling, you know, like cold calling and oh, stuff yeah. like that. It's like, it's like a rush for me, but I love that. Side. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. Because otherwise you probably wouldn't have as much business exactly. if you didn't, didn't yeah. like it. Yeah. It keeps me in the rear sometimes because I hate dealing with uh, like ordering and, sure. you know, just like, uh, I hate being like stuck to, you know, like you have to get this order in, you have to, um, you know, and in some of the employee stuff, you know, like mm-hmm. I hate having to do schedules and, you know, yeah. Sally wants off on Monday and, you know, it's just junk like that. Yeah. But, but that's part of the. But then you get to make kind of calls and meet new people and yeah. invite people to come on your show and all love the rest that. of it. Yeah. yeah. I love that side. So with the clients that you have, is it quite a large area or is it more just kind of <clears throat> Oklahoma City Metro and. Yeah, surrounding areas. Kind of depends. We sell uh so I have like one customer in Iowa that I sell really? hay to. Yeah. So we sell we can sell a lot of stuff just middleman. Okay. So we have relationships with farms and yeah. then there's people that, you know, they're farms that don't produce hay, you know. So there's big horse farms that want to buy stuff. We sell to a lot of other feed stores. Um so we're a distributor for one cool one sale. brand. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um so we go all the way down to like south south Oklahoma, like Texas area all the way up to Iowa. Um, I've sold a few loads in Minnesota, yeah. stuff like that. So we kind of go all, all over. Yeah. That's really good. But as far as like, I, obviously like walk-in traffic, it's <laughs> around the Metro, but sure. we do one-on-one sales um, all over. Yeah. So you're not just calling the 405 and the 918. It's no. like <laughs> yeah. And that blows everywhere. some people's mind, you know, that, like, oh, yeah, I never like our that. feed, our feed sales company, you know, I've got one deal I'm trying to get done in Lubbock where I can sell and feed and, but it's all, it's produced in Oklahoma either way. And it has to be on a semi either way. So I'm like, yeah, I don't need to see them. Like, yeah, <laughs> they that's can, fair enough. most people text in their orders and it's over with. So that's really yeah, good. It blows a lot of people's minds that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, there, but yeah. Well, in the agricultural industry in Oklahoma is massive. Isn't yeah. It? It's huge. Yeah. You have an endless, endless amount of, yeah. of customers here in the Metro. Is it quite easy? I assume with the ranch and stuff and with the farms, it's generational as well. Right? A lot of it. I mean, when you get into the commercial stuff like we're doing, I mean, like Lazy E, I mean, it's like they have MBAs and they're, 
I mean, and that's a lot, a big misconception. Like, you know, one of the guys at Lazy E, I mean, he wears like skateboard, like he wears skateboarder brand yeah. hoodies and, you know, <laughs> flat bill. I mean, it's not, yeah. you know, it's not like what you would think of. These are like big businesses. It's not, you know, just your typical, I like love that, though. Johnny boy. Has, yeah, I love and that. I've got, I've got one customer that I've only seen him in overalls, you know, I mean, yeah. there's a little bit of a huge mix, but it's not. I guess what you could say, like your it's traditional not, it's not, it's not normal bit, like normal. It couldn't be traditional is the right word for it. It's not traditional business, yeah. like suit and tie, white collar, like exactly. you know, come to my office type yeah. thing. It's like go out and meet me, and that. But that's great though. Like I love that. And they're they're typically down to earth people. Oh yeah. I mean, they it's not you know, and you're dealing with animals and stuff, so everybody's going to be yeah. somewhat in that. The mode. outdoors just does that to people though, doesn't it? Yeah, like it makes them normal. Yeah, like it's there's nothing better unless it's freezing cold. There's yeah. nothing better than being outdoors. And if you yeah. spend an afternoon outdoors, you're just like, this is. I feel refreshed. And then yeah. you meet people who've done it their entire lives. And you the wonder why they are the way they are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I'd love to put overalls on all day and just go <laughs> ride horses and drive drive trucks and you know just kind of move stuff around. Yeah. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. But yeah, I want to learn so how easy. to. I want to learn how to ride a horse properly because I'm. Dude, let's I'm get you on a racehorse. I'm, no thanks. I'm scared <laughs> of riding. I'm scared of riding horses. Really? Yeah. I just. So my daughter just I, got I a pony, want, a little miniature oh, horse. Thanks. You want to give that one on for a second? <laughs> yeah. You just put that. him in between your legs. You don't even have to touch him. <laughs> I know. I would love to learn how to ride a horse. Dude, come over. Like I, that would be awesome because I'm. We got like twenty horses in my backyard. It. Yeah. Because I had around? like my so we went back home for Christmas. Me and Taryn went home, and every time we've gone home, she's like, because there's a near my hometown, there's a a farm that breeds racehorses. It's right by the coast, and they kind of do like they you pay and they take you on a trail. And so my wife's been wanting to do it for like four years, and I'm like, no, you don't have to do all that. Well, Just come out to Old Tuttle. Well, she's we can slap you on a horse. So she did it at Christmas, right? I didn't. Oh, go, I got a, so she actually did I, it. I got a friend of mine's girlfriend to like, hey, do you want to go do it? Yeah. Oh, great. You two can have a great time. Go. You know, <laughs> oh, I wanted to go. So that's exactly can. how it happened. <laughs> um, so they both went, had a blast. Well, Nick, the guy who, who whose family owns the horses, like, you know, there was like a two hour trail down the beach, all scenic, you know, they're trotting down the beach, all this movie kind of stuff. <laughs> if anybody's ever seen a Guinness commercial, the horses running through the waves, that's what they were doing. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, and I'm like, oh, just like, I'm, I'm that, I'm impatient, right? So if I get on a horse, I need to learn and it's going to take me a long time to gallop down through the waves. <laughs> I see myself, right? You know, and he's like, it's like a being a race car driver, right? Or yeah. driving, you know, like, I need to learn how to drive, but I want to go 150 mile an hour yeah. in a race car. I think that's kind of how... I've just got that. But I can put you on a racehorse. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of racehorses, you've got Remington's literally a mile away from the store pretty much. Um, You know, we have some mutual friends that do some very big, cool things there. The Vance family have played some golf with with Matt and Dave. Uh, What's your relationship with them? So it's kind of crazy. Um, Remington basically has the facility. Okay. So when you... When you you can, what they call, apply for stalls. So if you want to train a racehorse, so you say, I want to train a racehorse. Most of the people that train the racehorses don't actually own them. Sure. So, you know, somebody will own the horse, somebody will train the horse, and then they apply for stalls back there. Mm -hmm. So some of the trainers will have the kind of the maximum is 40 stalls, a.k.a. they have about 40 horses, and then some of them will have two or three or four. So what we have to do is go to each of those trainers and basically we get on the facility of Remington and then we, it's up to us after that. Yeah. So we, we park a machine over there where I walk around every morning and talk to every trainer that I can basically, and then come back here. We load stuff up, take it over there. Like, Hey, what do you need today? Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of work. So it's just one-on-one sales. I mean, yeah. it's like, so I'll talk to, there's probably 80 of them back there total. Yeah. You know, I'll run into say 40 of them because, you know, one of them right. might have just went over to Sonic or whatever, you know, and I miss them. Yeah. Um, so I'll talk to maybe 40 and then out of those 40, maybe 20 will actually need stuff that day. And over time you build so, a relationship and mm-hmm. they recognize you and they just, yeah. You, hey Steve. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of people are like, just don't let me run out. So I just walk by and I see there, you know, it's a lot of yeah. memory and just send them an invoice kind of thing. And yep. Yeah. Yep. I, the relationship business is the way to go, isn't it? It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy how, like, convenience, too. I mean, people do care about prices, but, man, like, convenience is the... If you save we'll time. We'll bring it out here. You don't have to worry about anything. You know, it Yeah. It kills. Yeah. Have you ever thought, thought about going the, like, 
wanting to ride more and like doing all that kind of rodeo racehorse all that kind of sport. me personally yeah like the competitive stuff dude i'm gonna blow your mind because that's nuts i basically have like zero interest in animals <laughs> This is even better. I'm being dead serious. <laughs> I'm being nice. dead serious. It's crazy. I have yeah. an animal science degree. Yeah. My dad has like a bunch of race horses, grew up around horses. And I think it's one of those deals like the, the city kid always wants to be the country boy and the vice sure. versa. You know, I think it's just like that type of deal. But yeah. That's what people are always like. What do you, I mean, people just assume like I yeah, have right, of course. horses, I have dogs, you know, and they're like, what yeah. do you feed? I don't. I don't. Yeah. What do you, you know, oh, come on, you know, blah, blah. I'm like, my dad does have horses. Like, fish. I know what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have zero, I have zero animals. Yeah. It's crazy. But yeah, so. But you grew up really. around them, so you know how to ride a oh, horse yeah. and all that stuff. Like, yeah. that's second nature to yeah. you. I'm super, yeah. like, in tune with um, being, like, knowing what I'm doing. And then obviously, like, now I know all the science side to things. Yeah. Now I know all the nutrition side to things. So I'm, like, very, like. Yeah, you know, familiar with it, but you have a doctorate degree basically in, in knowledge of that stuff just from over time and business. Yeah, and collecting it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So I'd say, I guess, what do you like to do then? What do you love to do growing up? Man, I don't know. Uh, I I was like huge into sports like growing up. Yeah, and I still am, but like this sounds crazy, but like I really like like I have a big like hobby like in business like I love business things yeah. and like. Like I could talk about business as a hobby It's like crazy as it sounds. That's good. And so I'm just like interested in like business as, you know, yeah. in general, I guess you could say, but like, you know, I still like am involved in like a little bit of sports and stuff, you know. Just so but, back to, I guess, you know, uh, swapping out Quizno sandwiches and for, <laughs> for, like that's where the business entrepreneurial yeah. side comes yeah. from. Yeah. Was there anything else you would like, you know, the whole lemonade stand stuff as well? Dude, I mean, I found a, I posted on my Instagram a while back, but uh, I actually found a flyer. I had forgot about it, but I started a dog walking business. Yeah. And my aunt was in town and I started like a legit, it was like Steven's dog walking business or something. And I remember I went door to door and like sold to all these people and I got like one customer or whatever, yeah. you know, but, but yeah. So I've always been real interested in business, I guess, from an early age but mm -hmm. and then i got really into it in college i like started reading books and like you know but yeah. just kind of recently i guess it's like so actually were you growing up you're into a lot of sports like football mm -hmm. baseball yeah or everything played, yeah played about every sport yeah so i uh tuttle's like huge into Big football, football of course yeah. yeah and so i was like huge into football like did all the work. I mean, it's like a full-time job, you know, yeah. it's six days a week, you work out and you know, stuff like that. So I was just like very consumed with, with everything with, with sports. Uh -huh. But like I said, at that time of your life, that's, that is life, isn't it? Yeah. And I, and that was one of those things, like <clears throat> I, I was a little bit not scared, but like, I was kind of like, am I a hard worker? <laughs> you know? Cause like, I never really had, my parents were super like, um, they made me work, but I never really had to have, I didn't have to have like a part-time job in high gotcha. school or anything like that. But I was kind of like, I like actually remember like thinking about like, am I a hard worker? Cause I worked out a lot and I like, you know, I was dedicated to sports and stuff, but I was like, is it different? Like working, yeah. you know? And, but, but yeah, I mean, that was like my job, I guess you'd say in high school. Yeah. And do you think it's like. What's the mic? It's rubbing on your jacket. Oh, is that what it you know, people listening, you're I like, heard what is feedback, that noise? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so with with sport, like being a job and stuff at the time, like that was life. That was. Did it come? Did you? Were you thinking I'm not working hard enough? Because it just naturally was just it came naturally to you that you really enjoyed working. Yeah. So it didn't feel like hard work. Yeah. Does that I make guess. Sense? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I I think that's really what it was. And yeah. And I still think it's like that now. Like you see that with like podcasting and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you find, I mean, it's really like if you find what you like to do. Like, oh, yeah. And there is aspects to it. Like, you know, even with sports, there's like you hate the sprints, but you love the, you know, yeah. other parts about it or whatever. I think that's kind of what it is, is if you really enjoy it, it feels like, you know, and then you're like, oh, I'm making money from it. So I guess it is right. working, you know. <laughs> no, that's, that's true. Isn't it? And like, and, and I've said this probably a million times on the podcast, but like, it's not work when you love what you're doing. Yeah. You know, that's very true. And, and people who, who are very successful, yes, they know they work very hard. And there are times, like you said, that you don't want to do things, but you do it because the good times are worth Outweigh every single, yeah, yeah, they're worth every single hard knock or whatever it is. So, yeah. So with, I guess, because you, you, 
we were skiing recently, right? Mm -hmm. So skiing is a big thing for you as well? Yeah, I love skiing. Um, I It was kind of a once a year type of thing. I've uh -huh. started the last couple of years, started going two and three times. Um, love skiing, love hunting. Um, I actually got a text this morning. They're we tried to do an annual elk hunt. Okay. And uh, so anyways, but yeah. Where do you I guess go for that? Ridgeway, Colorado. Okay. So it's kind of a, it's like a crazy deal. The guy I go with, um, it's a father, son, and they used to be guides in Colorado elk hunting. And so like two out of the like 10 people in our group are, used to be elk yeah. hunting guides. And it's like this private land and which is like super rare. Yes. To, I know enough to be about like hunting go. to yeah. know that that's like gold mine. <laughs> so it's like, it's a private land deal and it's like super cheap. And as far as like hunting, so you, private land if, have you, have you got, got one every time you've gone? Uh, so I didn't the first and then the second time, um, I did. And then it just feeds so, you for the year basically. Oh yeah. It's like, I don't remember that exactly. I think it was like over 200 pounds of meat. Yeah. So it's like, honey, we need to buy a new, uh, we had to buy a new, buy a freezer. new freezer. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So the last year I shot, uh, an elk and a buck and I mean, it was like insane. And yeah. my whole family had like, the did kids. you do the whole like mat head mount and stuff like that? Yeah. It's in my, it's I'll here. show you. It's in my office. Yeah. yeah. The whole, both of them. Uh, so there, I did the, they call European mount. So it's like the bear skull yeah. and then the antlers. Yeah. yeah Cause the, the neck and head could, it's, it's huge. Yeah. It's not small. And at the time I thought I was going to put it in the house maybe, but <laughs> it's just my, like, uh, no, nah. she was like, going in your office. She and that's said it. we didn't have enough room for it, but yeah. you know, I don't think she wanted the antlers hanging out. You don't out. want this above the dinner She's table? She's like, it's not big enough. So. Oh no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. That's hilarious. Yeah. But so you try and go and at, built that relationship with those guys just from yeah so out. we know each other from church yeah and uh yeah it was one of those deals like want to try elk hunting i was like yeah yes i out. do yeah so yeah they like told you everything so that guy actually like hung out with me so it was like basically a guided hunt yeah and, <laughs> it was so crazy I've, so you shot him have you done like the bow side of things as well yeah so i shoot a bow and I got a bow range because that's real hard right that's you want to shoot a bow i would love to try yeah let's go right after this yeah we'll do I'll that because i'm like not very gifted with I play golf and Dude, that's we're about full it. on Joe Rogan here we got a podcast yeah. and a bow and set up <laughs> and a gym and everything else yeah. great that's awesome yeah um, what's the bow stuff like that's that's really hard it's super right? hard so first off they have to be within depends on how good of a shot you are obviously but like you know 60 yards is nuts but like you know less than 60 yards close yeah. to you. So that's hard to get to any animal that close, no matter, you know, if you're right. deer hunting or whatever. And, and when you're elk hunting, you pretty much have to be on the ground. Well, if you're on the ground, they can see you, hear you, you yeah. know, everything. So that's the first hard part. And then the second hard part is it's, it's actually takes skill to slow your breathing, you know, in focus right. and all that. So it's pretty tough. Yeah. And that's something that's just Takes a lot of practice. Yeah, a lot of practice, which I'm then, not the best at practicing that, so. Well, you run a business. You're busy, <clears throat> right? Yeah, yeah. That's why I put it in here. I'm like, ah, oh, five seconds. I'm just shoot. So. <laughs> yeah. um, that's awesome. So, like I said, you travel around a lot, see a lot of, you know, ranches and, and family-owned businesses and stuff like that. What's, I mean, what's it like doing business with ranches and families in Oklahoma? It's pretty cool. Um, I don't know. I... I have a, I guess, a strong admiration for well-ran businesses that, mm -hmm. especially that are family. Yeah. Um, because you know when we go to a lot of these, it's pretty rare to have a multi-generation, you know, business, and that's sure. super common in a in an agriculture deal. A lot of it has to do with like land. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's hard to start one from scratch. So a lot of that has to do with acquiring land, but. I have a lot of respect for businesses that are multi-generation and they're well-ran because it seems like a lot of the kids don't want to be in the same business or yeah. they ruin it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. They're like, oh, this land's worth a lot more money than <laughs> I want to work for. So <laughs> yeah. just, I'll just I'll sell just it to a developer and it's yeah. become like, there's a, I kind of, I don't live in the country, but I'm very kind of close to it. And there's a couple of landowners that there was a farm on the corner, uh, it's on the corner of council and Wilshire. And it was like a horse farm and trainer and stuff. And like, I think... Kind of over by the turnpike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once like the, the kind My of house... trainers went, used to be out there. Once, yeah, I it's right next to like, they about. built like a new Casey's right next to it. Yeah. So when I first came to the States, we used to drive, what's probably like four or five years ago when, after I graduated, you know, you could see the, the house was empty and then they sold it to a developer and then like 
it's slowly dwindling down. You know, there's yeah. there's a few horses out there now. If but it's, it's the same one that I'm thinking of. It's right next of. to Wiley Post. Oh, maybe that's a different one. No. Yeah. Off like we sure. had council and what Wiltshire or something like that. Yeah. Is it? yeah. But, but that's exactly what happens yeah. with I a mean, lot of them. If it was me and someone gave me a land, then I Make don't. Out of here? I wouldn't. Well, I. Well, you're scared of horses. So I also, I wouldn't. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth <laughs> anybody's time to have me train their horse or feed their horse or whatever it is. But like, who wants this land and how much money are you going to pay me? <laughs> I'll sell it for a dollar. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a little more than a dollar. A couple more zeros. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh, it's. I'm sure it's sad to see that sometimes. If you've had a relationship and have generationally had a relationship with someone, and then the grandson takes over. It's happened a few over, times. Yeah, it's happened like, a few times where the the parent like passes away or whatever and there was one that it was like clear that the child was on drugs yeah and it was like so sad the mom used to come in all the time and i knew she had a really successful business Mm -hmm. and passed away and the daughter was like strung out and she came in for feed a little while and then just like came in was like it's my last time i'm selling all this stuff yeah and it was just like sad like the parent had built up this huge business and you could tell like the daughter just like yeah it was sad (sighs) But I got any uh, got any funny stories from from I mean I guess cold calling at ranches is not I, I, it's not really the safe thing to do right you're yeah. rolling up to someone's ranch in your truck and they're like who are you what do you want it's crazy <laughs> yeah walking out with a shotgun yeah like at first I was like super scared because it can be a rough crowd of course like yeah it's ag industry so the whole, it can you're be, on like, my land pretty, thing yeah, like I rough. can shoot you overalls yeah. and shotgun type of situation yeah but yeah I've had a few like weird circumstances a lot of like not interested and it's also it adds another like mix to it that a lot of times a house is also where their farm is so you're not just going up to their business where they're there during business hours it's also like their house and they walk inside for lunch and it's like i'm at your house now you know it's a weird deal and all of them have huge dogs so that's also a weird mix um (laughs) I maybe like five years ago, I got real jacked on this book called The Ultimate Selling Machine. Okay. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. You got to read it. It's real. Read. It'd be, yeah. He did a lot of, uh, the guy, the author has passed away now, but he did a lot of uh, real estate um, coaching. Okay. But, anyways, it's about like one on one sales. And he talks about just doing like radical things to get business. So, in one of the, the radical things to get business, he does is like send somebody something in the mail. That is still just like so cheap as like sending them a letter, but send them something stupid like a Rubik's Cube or something like that. So like no joke, I sent out one of these to like 20 people and there's like big, big potential people. Yeah. This guy has like three or 400 people, horses. And so I'd send him a Rubik's Cube and be like puzzled about how to save money or something. I mean, just yeah, like the corniest, cheesiest, cheesiest thing stupid ever. thing. But yeah. it was like something they can't throw away, like a Rubik's Cube or something, you know, just like small enough where it was cheap, but like big enough where they like wouldn't throw it away, hopefully. Yeah. So I send this guy this Rubik's Cube, no callback. And I send him something else. So it was like, send him something, then call him like a week later. Sure. So I, I can't get this guy on the phone. I keep sending on these stupid things. And finally I called up part of the book talked about how just act like, you know, them. So I finally get on the phone with this guy and I acted like I knew him and the lady forgot to put him on, put me on hold. So she goes, uh, blah, blah, farms. And I go, it's a, uh, this guy here. And, uh, his name is Danny. I said, is Danny there? They go, uh, who is this? I said, Oh, it's just Steve. And they're like, so, you know, most salespeople are like Steve cook with cook. Yeah, you know, of course. Yeah. That's Steve. Uh, who are you with? I was like, <laughs> um, I was just, just Steve. I was just needing to talk to Danny. They're like, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were a salesperson. I was like, okay. <laughs> so she forgets to put it on hold. She goes, I don't think he's here. Hold on one second. She forgets to put it on hold. She goes, his name is Steve. He acts like he knows you. He goes, okay. So he comes up. He comes up, gets on the phone. He's like, yeah. I was like, this guy's rough. I mean, like outer shelf. Now I've gotten to know him, so yeah. I know it's not. But outer shelf, I mean, he's like, sounds rough. He's like, what? I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure my voice got like so high. Like, <laughs> hi, Steve. Uh, hi, this hi, is Steve. Could be not doing, you know, I'm like, now what do I do? I've told this guy, like, it's yeah. just Steve. I know you, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, this is Steve with Cookie Now Door. Uh, did you get my package? So he's like, he's like, what? I'm like, uh, I've been sending you these packages. Uh, one was a calculator. One was a Rubik's Cube, like all the stuff. He's like, he starts laughing. He goes, yeah. He goes, I ain't interested. Click. I was like, dang it. Yeah. So anyways, it goes on, man. I tried for another like two or three months. Can't ever get a hold of him. So finally, um, come full circle, like maybe two years later, I kind of cooled off a little bit on calling him like two years later. Were you still sending him stuff though? 
Yeah. I would yeah. like still send him like, I'd send him stuff on Facebook or send him stuff in the mail. Like I'd just change it up. Yeah. Could never get a hold of him. Come like a year or two later. Um, he had this issue with his feed where he, he actually got this toxin and it killed a bunch of his horses and big deal. phone rang. And uh, I was like, come out here and I need to talk to you about feed. Go out there. The dude is so intimidating. He's like six, five, always wears overalls is like crazy. Like look like he's a farm. He he's is not like small. super, <laughs> yeah. has like hundreds of horses. He's a big deal in the industry. And, uh, and now he's like one of my biggest customers. That's the best. Dude, ever. he died laughing after I like kind of get to know him and stuff. He's like, he's like, man, he's like all these explicit. He's like, you sure are convincing blah, blah, blah. He's like, he's like, so then the stranger walks up when I'm telling him when we're talking about it. He's like, hey, he's like this guy. He used to send me these Rubik's cubes and all this kind of stuff. He's like, he's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, but he I'm remembers just, like, you. Dying laughing. He never forgot me. He's one of the largest marijuana producers in Oklahoma, too. Now he is? Yeah. Yep. He has like wow. 400 horses and a bunch of marijuana. Crazy. That's an industry, too. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Goes on yeah, you've seen that industry come in, too, right? With yeah. like one of the outdoors people, like, they have all this land and all this available space. That's exactly what Everyone's he does. coming to them. Like, he converted one of his barns to a marijuana yeah. growth deal. Yeah. He's got, like, as many employees on that side as he does the other. Wow. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. What do you think about all that stuff? Like in that kind of... I don't know. I feel like it's very like, you know, like vape shop type, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I feel like there's going to be 9 million of them and then those kind of cool and off a little bit. those guys aren't going to make the money. It's the guys who have, the, they're growing and making yeah. all the money. But, yeah. and that's what that guy told me. He goes, man, he's like, I've already seen the prices like drop since, yeah. you know, he's like, since I started, you know. So I feel like it's a little bit uh, supply and demand, I guess, mm -hmm. of course. But yeah. who knows? Maybe it'll be kind of stick around type of deal. But Sure. I don't know. So back to, I guess, present day, the uh, Norman store is going to be, what's the timeline on that? <laughs> Man, um, we were just talking about it today. Hopefully like September, October is what we're yeah. kind of thinking. Late fall, it was supposed to be spring originally, and then it moved to summer, and now it's kind of fall, but we'll see. Yeah. And uh, you've already kind of been building a client base for that store already. Yeah. If just met with, yeah, we have a bunch of customers down there already. That's what's Great. cool about already having stores is we can set up and, um, we're trying to have a huge growth on delivery. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we can just kind of say like we're delivering in Norman now. So it's kind of a cool yeah. ability that we already have other stores that we can do stuff like that. And I, well, I guess what's planned for the future just to have as many stores as you can, <clears throat> man, here in the last couple months, um, kind of had like a take over the world plan. Yeah. No one's doing delivery. And I really feel like that's that's like your market. You need to jump into order online and deliver is where the rest of the entire world is. And Everyone's doing it. Right? No one's doing that in feed. Yeah. So there's like a few, you know, Atwoods, Tractor Supply are some of the two main large people around here, and they're not doing it at all. Mm -hmm. And so I think we kind of have three sides of the metro, and we'd like to have maybe farther north, Edmond or sure. southwest side, um, and maybe just have growth on delivery after that. So we're just hired a web developer to polish up our e-commerce and mm -hmm. um, have like a zip code identifier so we can know like Where it's if we deliver from. in this area or if we don't, you know, you can just punch in your zip yeah. code. And, um, so that's kind of our Be the plan. Amazon delivery of, uh, of feed. <laughs> of the feed world. Yeah. It's crazy, man. The feed industry is like like 10 years behind the rest of the world. I so you can just that, like though. see what everybody else. It's like, oh, cool, Walmart pickup. Okay, we'll do that in two years. Yeah. It's like, and you'll still just, be early. Yeah. And you'll still be, early. yeah. There's multiple feed stores. So we sell to other feed stores. So I kind of know some uh -huh. multiple feed stores don't have computers. That's like a common deal. Yeah. They don't have computers, much less websites, much less. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. It almost makes you think that you should like start a tech business for feed stores. Yeah. Like a it's website. It's insane. Like, hey, this is what we can do. This is what we've done for our business. I can do this for you too. It is crazy. Kind of yeah. So Perina has this, uh, so we're like one of the largest Perina dealers. Okay. And uh, they have this deal. It's called like a panel. And they had this panel on marketing. And mm -hmm. so like I have Steve's Horse Show and like all this stuff. Like, hey, why don't you be on the panel for marketing? So it's like 300 dealers and feed stores, other feed stores. Yeah. And I'm on this like stage and they're like asking all these questions about marketing. When I tell you that like 90% of the questions were like, how do I start a website or a Facebook page? I mean, it was like. Have you heard of. Uh, what is it? Where Squarespace and all these other websites. <laughs> it was crazy. It's I like mean, going it was back like, in time. 
it's it's insane. And they're like 60 years old, you know, 50 years old. And it's like, well, I hired this high school kid and he said I should start a Facebook. Yeah, you he's know, charging it's like, me a thousand dollars a month yeah, to do my Instagram. Like, this <laughs> high school kid that works in the warehouse is trying to get me Jeez. online. You know, it's like, I need, to, I need to list these people. Maybe they can sponsor the podcast. Yeah. No, they, they don't. Have no, they, they don't know what a podcast is. Well, they might know is. what a radio show they is. <laughs> hey, remember that radio you still listen to? Yeah, that's what I have. Do you want to do a radio ads? I, when I tell you, I asked one of my customers if he wanted to be on the podcast, yeah. on my podcast. He has a huge business. He said, what's a podcast? Yeah. I'm not joking. And I was like, you know, kind of like a talk radio show. He's like, yeah. I'm like, it's kind of like that. But, you know, he's like, but so is it live? live. Yeah. Nope. I'm like, it's crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. That's when you, when you time. reach out to guests and you see, you know, is it live? <laughs> And you say no. That's when you know they you have them, right? Because they're <laughs> they're like, oh, it's it's pre recorded, it's edited. Yeah. Yes, I'll be on. Yeah, you know something about that, man. People like freak out on live stuff. Yeah, and video too. Like that video, like the C Source show, dude. Yeah. It took some convincing. People yeah. like that was the first question always. Is it live? I'm like, no. I put it on Facebook, but I edited it it's, first. Yeah. Oh, um. So like you record it, <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, it's like a video. It's crazy, man. People yeah, because it's like on a naturally. But you know all about that, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't you, a lot don't of you hate video? I I, well, I hate the editing of video because I I was like I want to try. I did an experiment. I was like I'm gonna do like a daily vlog for like 10, 15 really? days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see how I can you? do it. Yeah, it's on YouTube. And see if I can do it. Right. It. And Is video it on my iPhone. Stuff? Oh, it's her. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> um, did it on my iPhone just to like want to know more about it, right? And know like can I do this? And maybe I can post one a week, whatever it is. Like, how much time does it take? And I did one about like a friend of mine's, his uncle has a Corvette and has a real cool story behind the Corvette. So I did one on that because I love cars as well. Uh, And it was like the snow day last year. So we literally just like started it in his garage and that was it. So, you know, just kind of tried to do that, copied some video stuff. And then I did like some random daily vlog stuff. It sucks, dude. I'm I'm, like, it's a lot of time to edit video. A lot of time. The amount of space it takes on your... Oh, yeah. That's what's killing me, man. It takes like... Man, some of my stuff took like eight hours to load. You know, it's like, yeah. dang. Like, I have a videographer friend of mine. He spends he spends so much money on storage every month. Really? Yeah, he just buys external hard drives and it, yeah. I can see that. Do you save all your stuff? It. Or do you yeah. delete it? No, well, I put it on an external, external hard drive. Oh, really? Yeah. See, yeah, like just after I'm done it with it, I just done. delete it. Well, it's on yeah. YouTube, right? You know, yeah. you can see it You can again. re-download it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, the video stuff's a different animal. But it's, yeah. on, it's on there somewhere. It's probably, I haven't watched it in a while. It's probably super cringy. But I love finding those stories, though, and that's probably the same thing with the podcast, right? You just, like, the car video that I did, the story, uh, Dave, he has always wanted a Corvette. Like, he just loved him growing up, always wanted a red Corvette, and, and he bought a raffle ticket at a mall for 200 bucks and won a Corvette. Shit. Yeah. Here. So he goes, collects that one, trades it in for a brand new one, and he specs it and gets his new one. That's insane. $90,000 Corvette. Are you serious? Yeah. He won wow. it for 200 bucks. It's crazy. So is it true, like on the taxes and all that stuff? I have no idea. I, didn't I wonder know, if you have to like pay. I know he like paid. He paid. It. He had money saved that he was saving up to buy a new one anyway. Get out he just of put here. that towards like you know inspect it how he wanted it and like that's and in the in the interview I did with him like I said this car is very personal to you. It's staying in the family, right? And he's like, yeah, this is this is a generational car that's like you know because it's so personal to him. He has like a Bible verse in the dash and like all the, it's it's Dang. really really cool. Uh, it's been a wedding car for a bunch of the family and That's like insane. driven it a couple of times. It's it's just an old Corvette, right? But to him, Dude. you know, and we see Corvettes everywhere. But that story to him was like that's special. Next level. Yeah. I so. wish I had like a cool I'm like so generic, man. Well, I, don't I, have like I thought a cool... that about myself until someone told me like they heard our podcast and they were like, Well, I didn't know that about you. Dude. And I was like, Yeah, but I'm just Dude, I, I feel country the same way. And stuff, though, like, well that's different. Just the that. accent, like Yeah. Well also like I think for yourself, like you have a family business, like it's you know, you, you, you've grown it significantly. Your parents have grown it and you've taken over and, and you do it all together. But it's not, it's a, it's a cool story, isn't it? Like I'll, I'll really when you're in it, when you're in it, it's Maybe like, oh, you know, thing. it's just like, what I do. Yeah. Right. And I feel the same way about doing the podcast. It's like, oh, you know, I saw this person or, you know, I heard this episode and what was that person like? I'm like, yeah, they were great. And, you know, I had a great time doing it, but it's a bigger deal, I think, to them than it is for me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we interview so many people, sit down or you meet people doing, just doing general sales yeah. every day. Yeah. That's very true. True. People I'd love to have on the podcast <laughs> that, that I either won't ask because I know they don't want to be on or they just don't want to be on anyway and they have an amazing story. Yeah. That's what's incredible about the podcast deal, man, is it just like you like get blown away by some of the stories that mm-hmm. that people have. Yeah. Has there been any crazy ones for you? 
on my podcast. Yeah. Dude, the guy I just had sentenced to however many, I think it was like over a hundred years and I can't remember the exact terminology, but Mm -hmm. he had over a hundred years of charges brought against him, I guess, or something. They rolled it all into one, which only gave him 20 years um, that he had. It was like called a mandatory sentence. And then somehow he gets that 20 years shortened down to like just a handful. I say a handful of years. I'm sure it's a long time in prison, but um, he gets his sentence shortened way down and ended up getting out. But he like, I mean, he was like on meth, dealing meth, cooking meth, like, I mean, it was like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like got to ask all my drug related questions that I've always wanted to ask. Yeah. Prison stories. I mean, the whole bit, which he kind of like clammed up a little bit when I was like asking about the prison stuff. You know, I was just like, I was like, man, like tell me some prison stories, you know? And he's like, ah, he's like, I turned my life around in prison and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I know. There's more to that story, right? Yeah. Yeah. I I hate that moment. As as someone who's interviewing someone, I hate that moment because you're like, I don't want to be that freaky, like weird, like news person that's like, no, but tell me about, you know, but at the same time, it's just like, but man, just the stories alone about him, like dealing drugs and all that stuff. Yeah. He said, and that was a like, kind of like weird part to me is I almost related to him so much because he was saying I was obsessed with the business side of it. He was like, I, it was it was like the money and the, he's like, I didn't really want money, but it was like, I was like, in comp- I was like, dude, I mean, I like related yeah. so much to his business. He like right. got obsessed with the business side of like dealing drugs. Well, they're like and the ultimate entrepreneurs, aren't they? It's what, it, and now he owns his own business. It's like, he's out in prison. He owns his own, he's like, it's kind of the same so thing. I'm great. like, dude, yeah. you know, it was like, crazy. he's like, but it's not illegal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, like all, I learned all the greatest business he, principles. He ever, was like on med. He said he was awake for, I think he said 13 days in a row once. That's nuts. That's wow. how blitz he got. <laughs> That's how blitzy guy. He smuggled yeah. it on planes. He was smuggling it on planes. Jeez. The whole bit. You've got to have more. Yeah. It was a crazy. So story. plug that episode on you. Who who how do you how do uh, people his listen name's to Larry that? Andrews? Um He's written I a should, book. Yeah, he's written a book called uh, The Ride. And uh I should have it on Chatter with Steve here pretty soon. Okay. So that's the podcast Chatter with Steve. Chatter with Steve is my podcast. And it's on all platforms? It's on all platforms, yeah. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Apple and everything. Yeah. Well, mate, this has been a lot of fun. I feel like so I could sit fun. here for like nine hours, but I know that if I show up late to dinner, Taryn's going to kill me because <laughs> I have to pick up something on the way home. She's going to kill me. Dude, and um, Valentine's We day. should definitely do this again. You got to do Valentine's presents Well, too. it's my anniversary soon as well. Like, Get out of here. That double dip. Yeah, double I was a cliche person who got married near Valentine's Do day. you just lump them in together? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she knows that too. Well, and also like my, my so my nephew's birthday is the same day as I will anniversary so our oh, anniversary man. is forever ruined <laughs> <laughs> right I mean, I mean you know especially like the young the first second third birthdays you know he's still kind of precious and cute once he grows yeah. up I'm like sorry dude it's my yeah. anniversary I'll see go pop up with your friends or something yeah exactly <laughs> uh, but mate this has been awesome so people can chat it with Steve's the podcast yep and then what's the social media and how can we chat on that uh, cook feeding outdoors our business yeah um, Steve Cook I've got personal pages and business pages but that's Where you can see both of your kids, not just one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then the video stuff's on Facebook or YouTube or both? Both. Okay. I try to be everywhere. Cook, feed, and outdoors. Cook, feed, and outdoor. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, people have pets. Come hang out. If you're listening to this and you own a ton of horses, you probably already know who Steve is, but if you don't, you, you need to check out. You better so, know. Mate, I really appreciate this. Thanks for coming on. Me too. Yep. Thanks for having me. Great. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll catch you next episode. Cheers. This podcast was presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, who've been telling Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. Follow them online at OklahomaHOF.com and definitely on Instagram at OklahomaHOF. Catch you next episode. Cheers. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.